love this podcast? Support us by leaving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Hit the link in the episode description to support us now. Thanks for listening and enjoy. And now the story of the wealthy Hollywood business who lost original ideas and the two podcasters who had no choice but to review them together. It's remakes, reboots, and revivals. Yo, Nicole. Hey, Rolando. <laughs> Yo, Nicole. Hey, what's up? Nicole. Hey. Yo, Nicole. Hey, what's up? Hey, you guys. Is that good? Is that good? I think that was good. Hey, Rolando. What's up? When you're walking down the street and you see a little ghost, what you gonna do about Ghostbusters? I actually don't know that part of the song. Nikki P, you're my boy, Ro. Eddie Z and Revivals, Charlie's Angels, come on. Uh, uh, uh. Question. The Power, the power 3, three will, will remake thee. thee. The Power, the power three, 3 will reboot thee. thee. The, the Power, power three, 3 will revive thee. Ooh, Rolando, please. Come, I'm excited to do the Remakes, Reboots, Revivals episode with you, discovering the Dark Crystal. Mm. Ugh. You excited, Rolando? I'm very excited. I'm Nicole. And I'm Rolando. And this is Remakes, Reboots, and Revivals, an original podcast. About unoriginality. Oh, yeah. Hello, 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 everyone. Can you believe it? Here we are, 100 episodes. Some of you naysayers out there didn't think we'd make it to 20 episodes. And here we are, 100 episodes, strong, thriving, some might say, even during a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Persistence pays off 100 episodes in. This is about the 100th time we've done this, which seems crazy because I can remember it doing the first one ever like it was yesterday and my god the the those early recordings are i don't even want to listen back to them ever because oh, but you are going to uh <laughs> yeah but um no yeah who knew did you think we'd get here 100 episodes you didn't think we'd kill each other by now i'd hoped we did <laughs> <laughs> and there's no animosity you know we're, st- we're still good that's good right <laughs> so that's because great yeah that's like the thing about radio I get maybe podcasting too, but like co-hosts hate each other. Mm, yeah. It's, you know, like apparently Anthony and Opie like despise each other. Oh, well, yeah. that's just too much ego for that. So I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have the so, right amount of ego here. Yeah. I have it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, did you think it. we'd make it to a hundred episodes? I'm, it went by quickly. Right. Wow. Just like, yeah, two and a half years. We're here. We're queer also. We are. Yeah. Get used to it if you're I not know. by now. 100%. <laughs> you know, but we before we get into like having some fun with our 100th episode, we actually want to have a little bit fun at the beginning. We decided that we're going to do a giveaway. Yes, we're giving away mugs specially designed by yours truly i'm so excited to share these designs although they're not that crazy simple they're very simple <laughs> designs but i'm very excited that we have mugs to give away in merchandise. general we have merchandise episodes. finally yes. yes i mean 100 episodes is the time to have merchandise but we are excited to share these mugs you will see them on our instagram posts mm-hmm. so make sure that they look lovely because they are lovely they are and, lovely uh, I think they're microwave safe. I think they're dishwasher safe too. They, these are the real deal, people. Real, real, real deal. deal mugs. And there are two designs. And they are going to be available this week only in this giveaway. And then the following week, we'll give you guys instructions on how you can purchase some if you want to purchase some. And I hope you do yes. because they will help the podcast. But for the first two that will go out to the public, those will be available only via giveaways nicole what are the instructions for these giveaways well so if you follow us on instagram the instructions first is one follow us on instagram we're going to be making a post an official post for the giveaway and the directions are as follows one comment on the image tag a friend and write giveaway in it and then you will be eligible the winner is going to be picked as random but we have to the catch is that you have to be following us you know because we want to give it to a fan not just mm-hmm. some rando. 
And the second way we were going to be giving away the mugs one of the mugs is by having you guys use our new phone number, our hotline. We want you to leave voicemails and we want to hear from you, our fans. So here's how this is going to work. I'm going to give you guys our phone number right now. And this, we're also going to create an Instagram post on this and social media posts. So you'll have the number, but you're going to call this number 862-248-2326. Leave your name and email and then leave us a nice message or a bad message. I don't care. Uh, oh, I, don't care. I prefer nice messages, but you know what? <laughs> I want to hear from you, whatever you guys have to say. Um, I don't know. Wish us, uh, wish us a happy hundredth. You know, maybe you're going to tell us what your favorite episode was. Anything, anything you guys want to share, share. And uh, then we will be picking out one at random. But, yeah, so and again, share your contact information. Right. And the contact. In, so you're going to make sure in your voicemail, you leave your name and email address. Those are going to be the most important things. I'll have your phone number too, technically from the voicemail, but leave us your name and email address for sure. Uh, but no, yeah. So yeah, use our number, call us, leave a voicemail. Uh, and I am excited to unveil this phone number so that way we can like, you know, play some messages from you guys on the show. If you guys ha- want to come at us because of something we said that you don't agree with, leave a voicemail. That's what it's there for. It's our way of getting you guys to participate because who knows, maybe one day we'll do a live show and you guys can actually like call in or whatever. Yeah. Um, but you know, we're, we're playing around. We want to be able to interact with you guys or more importantly, I guess I want you guys to interact with us for sure. So yeah, but I think you're going to love these mugs. I love them. They're so cute. I actually haven't used them because I just, I love them so much. Right. It's like looking at them. (laughs) They're museum pieces. Yes. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> well without any further ado let's get into it uh our 100th episode this all started back in june of 2018 despite the fact that we didn't go live until september of yes. 2018 so well specifically june 12th i believe it was uh-huh. around there That's uh right. rolando and i who had been you know kicking around this idea of a podcast and the idea was more so rolando's of doing the remake reboot and revivals market because you know there was room for us there and as film people we we wanted it so i came up with the name first and it wasn't remakes reboots revivals the original name that i wanted was nostalgia but then it turns out someone does a podcast and nostalgia is just apparently just like pop news i was Mm. just like what a waste what a waste (laughs) so sorry guys if you're listening uh i'm just saying it's just like come on nostalgia perfect for this would have been perfect name for this podcast so then i just came up with remakes i think we as a team like came up with remakes reboots and revivals and i think the r's the alliteration just worked yeah i love alliterations for sure and despite the fact that we're both film school kids you know we really didn't know how to go about it at first um so our first recording was actually done with a a lav which is like those little mics that you hook to yourself but it was only one that we put on top of the laptop between the two of us yep and And uh we were like it'll it'll capture we'll we'll see how it sounds you know (laughs) and we did it in rolando's dining room Mm -hmm. and it was just us i don't even think anybody else like i think eddie was there but i don't think anybody else was actually a part of the recording i don't think so either i think eddie was there uh, kind of keeping an ear to us like if uh if like he was like the layman right he was supposed to be like the the pot because he was the avid podcast listener out of the two of us right i listened Mm -hmm. to podcasts but it was mostly talk mostly talk entertainment i think you were gravitating towards like murderino stuff Yeah, yeah. I listen to film and true crime podcasts primarily. Yeah, so we needed someone who can, like, at least tell us. It's just, like, will people understand what we're talking about? Yeah. I think he cringed a lot during that first recording. (laughs) (laughs) Eddie, do you remember that? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so uh, I cringe a lot because I also did think, because we were butting heads a lot those first few recordings. Yeah, a little bit. Well, so because we came from such different, like, standpoints uh, or at least viewpoints. I was uh-huh. a little bit more critical, and yeah. you were definitely more of the fanboy. I was. And I was much more pop culture. Like it's just yes. like let pop culture be pop culture. Mm-hmm. And here we are, so many years, like what two and a half years later. I'm just like, you know what? Fuck Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do. It. <laughs> I can't do it either. Right. I mean, well, so we should say that the first episode we choose to tackle was Beauty and the Beast. Right. Welcome to remakes, reboots, and revivals. An original podcast about unoriginality. And today we'll be discussing Disney's Beauty and the Beast, both the animated version and the 2017 remake. 
I'm Rolando, and today I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Rolando. Nicole, uh, Beauty and the Beast, what can you tell me about it? What do you know? Um, like, in terms of the Beauty and the Beast story, or the, the movies specifically? Let's, like, uh, what's well, the origin? What, so what do we know about the actual story, Nicole? Okay, so Beauty and the Beast is a novel by Jean-Marie Le Prince de Beaumont. Wow. I know, what a name. So, it's, so it was always French. Yeah, it was always uh, French. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's based on a French short story. Okay. It's very popular, I guess. It's a, I don't know if it's as popular as, like, say, a Hans Christian Andersen story is or the Grimm's Brothers, but it's like, now at least it's pretty prolific and it's up there. I do know that in the 1950s, like, I'm big on, on history and, like, film history. And I do know that in the, around the time that they made Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty, that Walt Disney was interested in making a musical version of Beauty and the Beast. After he died, and Disney kind of went through this bizarre era. I mean, like, we can't even really think about the films that came out between the 70s and the 80s, because they weren't that great. Um, the Black Cauldron was one of them. Well, like, in terms <laughs> of, like, the best Disney movies that everyone's always trying to remake and revive or put on Broadway or just, like, call to, like, they don't talk about those films, like The Rescuers or Oliver and Company oh, or Robin man. Hood. They're good movies, they but good movies. people don't care for them as much as they care for, like, the Disney Renaissance films, right? Right. So The Little Mermaid, 1989, and then right after that, two years later, 1991, Beauty and the Beast, 1992, Aladdin, and 1994, The Lion King. Um, and these were, like, the films that people were obsessed with, and they put Disney back on the map as a powerhouse. And, and it really did save Disney, in my opinion. Most certainly. I mean, when you think back about it, it's uh, it's a prolific film, if you think about it, because it was the first animated film to be nominated for an Oscar for Best Picture. Groundbreaking. Yeah. Uh, I think it did take away the Oscar for Best Original Song, Beauty and the Beast, right? Yeah. Uh, and who could forget that Celine Dion version? Uh, you know. <laughs> and Peebo Bryson uh, yeah. oh my god that's right Peebo Bryson that's right it was a duet uh, what's it called so- and we enjoyed at least our discussion enough that when we decided to continue uh, record actual episodes that we would release we redid Beauty and the Beast correct that is true yes and, and it- uh, we kind of actually influenced each other I don't know if you remember that but from the first discussion we had, when we did the actual recording, we kind of saw things from each other's viewpoint a little yeah, better. Yeah, interesting how that worked out, too, mm-hmm. which I wasn't expecting, but yeah. that's how it goes. I do think we've influenced each other a little more than we th- we've we realized over oh, the no. years. Oh, no. I would agree wholeheartedly on that one, for yeah. sure. Even the yeah. way I, I, I analyze films like colloquially with friends now, right, who aren't like film buffs has mm-hmm. changed how I talk about film because of, sure. of your viewpoints. And I think, cause I think you usually think the most, I, you're definitely much more accurate than me. I feel most of the time. Um, but you know, I tend to be more, I don't know, hyper-focused on like random shit. I feel like that's how <laughs> I tackle film, uh, film critique, film criticisms. Yeah. I'm just such a history buff, mm-hmm. especially. And like my preference is for everything before I was born, you know, that's my big joke. Right. Um, So I always come from that point of view and I don't know, I'm a little bit, I think I started off more jaded than I've become, oddly enough. Like, I think I've warmed up a little bit to some of these just because some of them have been such pleasant surprises. Correct. That's exactly what I was going to say. I think the the pleasant ones that we have covered have been truly pleasant. And I will also say this is like usually LGBTQ slanted somehow, some way. And yes, yes. And those are the ones that just like resonate most, I think, with us Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. sure. But But our first ever released episode uh, Uh that was released mid-September of 2018 after we got our shit together, was Lost in Space. Do you remember that episode? I do remember Lost in Space. And uh, I I think I pitched it as the episode. Yes, you did. Do. I yeah, didn't even because... know there was a Netflix Lost right. in Space. And that's because I had watched it, I think, over the summer at that point, And I, I enjoyed it. And I happened to, if you listen yeah. to the episode... You remember, I was also a fan of the Lost in Space 90s movie. With Matt LeBlanc, Late 90s, yeah. early 2000s. Yeah, that movie. Uh, watching it again is just like, oh, this is a hot mess of a movie. It's, it's so still bad. enjoyable. <laughs> I think it's like it's like just a popcorn flick. Yeah, it is. And, yeah. Uh, and then I got I had a chance to watch like the first episode and just like, realized, oh, shit, like this is actually this is good. Uh, so yeah, and that's I think ultimately I feel like that did set the tone of me like kind of being way more open minded with old old stuff. Yes, for I sure. think so too. Uh, 
I actually remember that your your text message was Danger Will Robinson. Is it still that? It is not anymore. I think that's now for my voicemails. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I think a lot of people got annoyed with like Danger Will Robinson. <laughs> you had actually, that for a long time. It was. It was you were my, like, that's just that's text. a recent change. Retone. That's like, that's actually funny. That's just recent. That was two and a half years ago, so that's that's pretty cute. I'm actually looking at our list of episodes and I can remember when you started opening up to some of the older films like you didn't think you would. Wait, can I guess as to what I think mine the moment was? Uh, okay, sure, go. I would say probably A Star is Born. Yes. Okay, so Because this is I actually, actually ended up liking more so I actually like the original one you over did. the yes. over mm-hmm. the the one that's iconic, you know. Well, I would say the first episode I would give that absolute credit to would be The Murder on the Orient Express because the 1974 oh, that's also film true. is definitely superior to 2017. But The Star is Born is actually, I do want to point that out as one of my favorite episodes we've done. And it's only our seventh episode mm. uh, because we covered four different films and they were so, they're so different. Uh, the 1937 with Janet Gaynor, the 54 with Miss Judy Garland, 76 with Barbara Streisand, and then the 2018 with Lady Gaga. And, uh, that was like one of the first times I had been in a theater because I wasn't going to the theater. I hated movies. And then starting this podcast, I had to start going to the theater again. Right, right. I hated new movies, I should say. Yeah, yeah. And so it actually got my ass to a theater. And, and then you watched the old Judy Garland one. And you confu- one of my favorite moments that's ever happened on the show is that you didn't know that it was Bed Midler who sang Wind Beneath My Wings. You thought it was Barbara Streisand. I remember this, yes. I was so... You said like you know who Barbara Streisand is, right? I'm like, yeah, she sang "Wing Wind Beneath My Wings." Everyone, oh my god, both you and Eddie gave me like the look I've never seen before from anyone. I'm just pure <laughs> disgust. <laughs> definitely, definitely a highlight moment for me. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it definitely was where I was. I mean, not so much the Judy Garland episode, but uh, the ep- movie. But you did like the 1937 one. I did. I thought it was it was good storytelling, right? Like it was a simple, fast story. It was very fast paced. Mm-hmm. I, you know, yeah. I think if you've listened long enough, like you know, you most people probably know that I'm not the biggest fan of musicals in general. Yes, yes. So that's why the Judy Garland one just never, never rubbed me the right way. Well, you know, yeah. I think you also really. It's hard to watch that film just to talk about this really, really quickly and fill in some gaps that might have been left from the recording two years ago, but. You really have to look at that film as kind of like how important it was for the career of Judy Garland. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was completely fired at the age of 27 because MGM created this monster and she was addicted to pills and she was really, really paranoid and kind of going insane. Oh. And that was their fault, right? But they weren't viewing it like that. So she needed this big major comeback. Were they viewing it like she's just a woman? Yeah, no, she's an ungrateful <laughs> bitch. That's literally right. what their standpoint was. Sounds about right. That was uh, yeah. that was probably a clinical term back then, too. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> um, so, and audiences loved Judy Garland, and audiences were very upset about this kind of public humiliation that she went through. Uh, so, for her to come back four years later, the audiences, you know, TV wasn't really a thing then. It was the early 50s. Uh, radio, too. You know, like, she wasn't really present on that. So she came back after not being seen for four years. Of course you're going to go big. Of course you're going to make, like, a two-and-a-half-hour and <laughs> epic <laughs> film epic, that just yeah. is, like, showing off uh, the talent that is Judy Garland, which is just... And it's also so different. You know, movies aren't made like that anymore. So it's it's... I have to defend it for that. I also think that was the episode where I learned that Judy Garland was Liza Minnelli's mother. Really? <laughs> if I remember, or maybe it was like while we were watching the movie, we we're just like, God, she looks like Liza Minnelli. And Eddie was just like, that's, so. that's her mother. <laughs> How like, are you gay? I know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we questioned gay. it back then, too. I know. It's just like, <laughs> where's your gay card? I want to see it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's definitely a, uh, a favorite memory early memory uh, no that one yeah that also is like one of my favorite episodes to this day because uh i think on some level they all hold up and i think also because like for me what i liked about that one was like if you also got to see a contemporary movie and see that like it's not all shit yeah which i think is my stance like i don't believe that like hollywood I, yeah i complain about hollywood a lot now on the podcast but like i mm-hmm. do believe they're still occasionally the good gems out there and they're just hard to come by specifically 
when we're talking about remakes or reboots, they're like almost impossible to find. However, mm-hmm. we have, uh, I think some properties have struck gold and uh, specifically sure. properties that try to like do TV instead of uh, just trying to cram everything into like an hour and a half, two hour movie. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I actually, it took me a while to remember. Like I remember people were like, oh, is this podcast just going to be you like always preferring the original? Right. But, you know, nobody says that anymore. <laughs> right. Because things have changed so much. And mm-hmm. we definitely, I at least have warmed up a little bit more. I don't remember when that shift began for me, where I actually started actually being more open to some of the uh, the newer properties. That's but... a great question. I'm going to, I'm like, gonna, I'm going to, I'm quickly looking through our episodes and stuff to see if maybe, I don't know. Halloween was also another one where we were both kind of, maybe yeah. it was like a moment Maybe so point me. Maybe it might have been early on. Maybe it might have been earlier than we realized because Girl Meets World was another one where you were kind of. I, I defended it a lot more than I did Boy Meets uh-huh. World, and I still will. I will defend that show <laughs> to the haters who haven't even watched a second of it, which is a shame it. because it is a good show. Yeah, but you know, Disney Channel show they're not, they're gonna. F- First thing they're going to do is they're going to compare it unfavorably to Boy Meets World, which is unfair because it's its own show. Really and then it's is. like, oh, it's about teenage girls. Who gives a shit about that? And it's like, oh, wow, well, you're just an <laughs> asshole and kind of sexist. Well, I was just looking through the list and I just realized the movie where I started becoming jaded as hell. Like, as uh, I think were. I know what it was. What? 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 Well, it was, I mean, definitely The Lion King. Yep. That's the is, exact episode yep. I was thinking about. I think that yeah. was like that moment was just like, oh, they can't even do this word right. Like, there's just no hope. Yep. Beginning with Dumbo. And I think even when we covered the Twilight Zone, because I'm looking at some of these in a row, right? We did Dumbo. We did uh, the Twilight Zone. We did The Hustle, which was a remake of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels and Bedtime Story. And mm-hmm. all of these were very unfa- <laughs> unfavorable yeah. remakes or reboots uh so there was just like men in black there was just kind of like you know crap after crap after crap yeah no it's true it's true like those were there were dark days on this podcast yeah. where yeah there were <laughs> where if you had to judge us based off of the state of hollywood it was just like oh it's not good guys it's, yeah it's not mm-hmm. good um but like i said occasional the occasional gem out there uh oh would it be the dark crystal would you say maybe that's when things took a turn for the better for you? yeah the dark crystal was probably throughout the 100 episodes we've done the biggest surprises for me um mm-hmm. we've often spoke about how we've sometimes went into things not really wanting to watch it and sometimes not really still wanting to watch it and turning it off like most recently with selena and then sometimes mm-hmm. you watch it and you're like oh wow this is way better than i ever thought it would be and this is actually one of the best things i've watched in a while right 100 percent was what the dark crystal was um devastated that we're not going to get any more but Ugh, i'm happy that I there know. was a perfect enough first season although that- i wonder if maybe D- netflix canceled it because disney plus is planning on picking it up oh god that's a long shot why a long shot. Does, doesn't disney own jim Henson's soul uh <laughs> Yeah, what and a as, terrible way to put it. But uh, and as a result, like his children and his property, his intellectual property. <laughs> I I mean, uh, they own the Muppets. I don't know if they own everything, but Jim Henson. Uh, good point. Good point. But yeah, so that was definitely one of my absolute, uh, absolute favorite. Actually, I really enjoyed that episode. That I was a good that episode. Was, I think yeah. soon after that, we also did Watchmen, which was I think mm. Watchmen. I was interviewed on another podcast before when I was doing press for uh, Game Changers in Medicine, which is the other podcast I show run, right? Yeah. And uh, when I was doing, when he asked me, he's like, oh, what's like one, like if you had to recommend one, what is one one show, like one remake that would be like, it's so good. I'm just like, oh, Watchmen. Watchmen yeah. is easily at the time. And I, I think it still holds up as like kind of being my favorite revival of a property because Watchmen yeah. was just so good. I mean, so timely. I mean, that one's, st- I mean, a year and a half, a year later, right? And it's still mm-hmm. like, yep. Yeah. Nothing, nothing has I changed. I still would recommend people to watch Watchmen. Mm-hmm. And like, again, it's only one season, but I think it should be only one season. They absolutely told the story they had to. Yep. And uh, yeah, what and a surprise. <laughs> that was, That's another one where, I mean, that was, that was a hard sell for me to you because... It was. Well, because I thought it was just going to be another version of Alan Moore's mm-hmm. Watchmen. And it was just such a unique, you know, it's it's not, we technically can't classify it as a remake, reboot, or a revival other than that 
it completely revived the property of Watchmen mm-hmm. and made this brand new thing inspired by it within its world. Yeah, we um, played a little. I played a little goose on the definition on that one, but I was like, no, we, we have to cover it. It's, it's, uh, I hear it's so good, and I was not disappointed. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. It was definitely, definitely. Thank you, because I really enjoyed it. Yes, yes. And then some of our more modern day, I think, like more contemporary, like most recent surprises have been like Babysitter's Club for me is something that comes to yes, mind for sure. Absolutely. Dracula. Mm-hmm. That kind of stuff. But we just had the award show. So if you listen, you know how we felt about those. I was like two episodes ago at this point, right? Yes. Uh, so you guys know, like, in terms of like what came out, what we covered in the last year during the pandemic, eh, there were some goodies out there. and There were. Uh, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think one of my uh, favorite episodes is when we covered One Day at a Time. Oh, yeah. That was I... also one of the first times where... I saw myself just really gravitating to the new one. Again, it's a television show, so it's hard because I can't really think of many films that I felt more passionately about the new one than the old one. But And that's a good one also because I think both shows, because it's a TV show to TV show, right? And yeah. that one, the original one, is also good, yes, right? The original like, is good. I think, yeah, it is. And But the reason I think for us the new One Day at a Time hits so close to home, though, is because it's a Hispanic family front and yes. center. And there's just something about that you just don't really get too often. Mm-hmm. And they really cover like LGBTQ. Oh, and the LGBTQ yeah. element for sure. Yeah. So that's like, that is a, a wonderful show. That was actually, that was your recommendation, Eddie. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm a big fan. Yeah. My mom was trying to get me to watch that before the podcast and I wasn't doing it. Because also the sitcom mm-hmm. uh, trope was kind of throwing me off. Right. But, yeah. you know, and I think a lot of people, that's why they don't watch it. And that's, you know, we named that episode Millennials Don't Watch Sitcoms because it a lot of people my age and a little younger weren't didn't even know this show was existing. They kind of just brushed it off as something that their parents would watch. And it's a shame because this show, I think, is so perfect for millennials to watch. I just want to stand on record and say that I had a t- problem with that title because we watch sitcoms <laughs> all the time. We don't watch the multi-camera sitcom, which is what we're talking about, which is just like the staged background. Yeah, and like I think when track. you think of the term sitcom, you think that kind of thing, you know. I don't. Like in, in front of I an think audience. Of now, I don't I think, think of, now, of The Office as a sitcom. I think of it as a television comedy. It's kind of different. It's most certainly not. It's a situational comedy. <laughs> Like, it's, I guess it's the style too. I think people associate the style of the sitcom as being mm, in front of a live audience. Mm, mm, mm. We're going to get I, into this again. I see. I, we are going to get into it again. <laughs> as someone who studied television terminology, I care more about film. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Eddie, do you have any favorite moments from the past two and a half years and past one hundred episodes that you want to share with everyone? Um. I remember how surprised the the remake of Perry Mason was. Oh, that's a good one. That's I good really one. enjoyed that. That was one of the ones that I dreaded doing. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, this is going to hurt. Yeah. I was not interested. I mean, I used to vaguely watch in the background the, the, the original ones uh, when my family would watch or someone from the family would pick it up. And I was like, oh, my God, this is so boring. So, but now, <laughs> like, I remember how... I was like so into it. Like that was like, that was a great surprise. How great that, yeah. that show was. Yeah. And that was again, showing you like, I think that's why that's, that's the main takeaway I think I've taken in the past, like hundred episodes. It's just like, if it's a TV show, I'm not saying all TV shows, because I think we've had our, our, our snoozes in mm-hmm. the past year. We have. We have. I'm thinking of black narcissist and Selena, unfortunately, unfortunately. But, but, uh, TV, like, when given in capable hands, they can do such great storytelling nowadays that, like, I understand now why, ho- like, ho- the Hollywood film industry is afraid of TV because, or in, and streaming, let's just be real, it's streaming. Yeah. Uh, bec- and it's because, like, you just have, you give creators the liberty of telling longer stories and really fleshing out characters in ways that just a movie can't. Yeah, it's almost unfair, you know, because there's just so much more that you can work with and develop and tell in a television show that a movie can't, mm-hmm. uh, which is why movies are dying, yeah. um, unfortunately. But So I have, a, I have a question for you, Nicole. Yeah, sure. So 100 episodes, 100. We talked about some of our favorite episodes, which correlate with some of our favorite properties that we've seen. But like if you had to like narrow down to like your top two or three or even just one least favorite remake or reboot or revival that you have seen in the last hundred episodes least I mean, favorite what, yeah least favorite like something that you just absolutely 
will never touch again. Don't ever want to see. Uh, thank you. Next. All right. Goodbye. I could do this. I could do this. Uh, absolutely. Would never watch the men in black again. That's that's a good one. That's a really good one. Yeah. Uh, it was really terrible. That's a, I mean, I think that's fair. I'm looking at the list and this is actually hard. There's some of these I would like, even though I didn't like them, I would maybe watch again. <laughs> <laughs> really? All right. Uh, probably won't ever watch the new lady in the tramp again. That's uh, yep. Those are yep, fair. And I most certainly will not recommend the new Selena to anyone. I have been ranting about that since we recorded that episode. <laughs> So have I, and I think, and we sat through a lot, I, I think we admit it, we just didn't finish it because it's just like so bad. It was very disappointing. It's just not good. And it it's was just so like, not needed. And it's just, it made me love, I maybe when I was rewatching Selena, I'm just like, oh my God, this is, and it's saccharine. It really is saccharine. Yeah. But yeah. it's so good. It is so good. It still holds up, except for J-Lo's accent. Now, when we yeah. watch it, I can't get over it. Like, when she's yeah. talking to Chris after he he partied up in the hotel room, and she's just like, you think this is you? I know you. But she's in her J-Lo accent, and her, obviously. Yes, the Bronx coming out. It's, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. I would also add Dr. Doolittle, because that was terrible. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I hated that one so much. Eddie, yeah. Eddie chimed in. He would uh, any Dr. Doolittle period, I was never a fan of any of the movies right yeah yeah none of them were really that enjoyable even and that was one where even the original musical was a bit much for me because i felt the music was very uninspired and the film was a bit too long it was kind of like contrived as this you know like well musicals are what's breaking the bank these days so let's come up with our own and it was just so uninspired and not. And it good. was nominated for an oscar surprisingly it actually but like we discussed in that episode, that's what fucking money can do. All right, they mm. paid their way into getting nominated for best picture. That's fair, fair, and bullshit fair. nomination. The Oscars are bullshit. Indeed, indeed. Let me think yeah. of. I think mine would probably be Lion King for sure. And I've complained about this since even earlier in this episode just now. Um, the Lion King for sure is one of my least favorite a film like remakes, and that's because mm-hmm. it was just so it had no heart. It yeah. just had no heart whatsoever, and I was just, just it, it infuriated me to a level that like even Dumbo, like Dumbo, Dumbo yeah, was it was bad, but like Dumbo, I can forgive, right? Because at least they did something different with it. Yeah, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Where yeah, I'm not crazy about uh, Tim Burton's aesthetics nowadays, but he tried, and I, I'm not gonna fault him for it. Uh, d- uh, 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 the Lion King just like was just absolute garbage, and I will stand by that to this day. That's that's a movie that I will never watch again. Have no desire to watch again. Will never watch again. Um, <laughs> I think that's the one that really just like infuriates me the most. You, um, I'm trying to think. I'm just sort of looking back also just to see if there's anything I may have. And the, and Lady and the Tramp, I think also fits in that category though. Yeah, same Lady thing. And the it was Tramp just was not no needed, uninspired. Yeah, it had no heart. No, it just. Uh, the worst. Uh, yeah. Outside of the, I think those are basically the two that I would put like in the we'll never watch again for sure category. Um, yeah. For me, I don't think everything else I can like forgive some on some level, but that yeah. one just absolutely not. Never. Yeah. For me too. So I have a question. Uh, after, you know, we're looking kind of like back being nostalgic, <laughs> On yeah, all these I know, property, right? our own properties and we've said we've grown quite a lot and we've we've influenced each other and our opinions have changed and stuff so after 100 episodes you know what do you take away from doing this podcast for two and a half years what have you kind of like learned about yourself oh well for me what i've learned about myself would probably be that i am open-minded to trying out genres that are from decades I had no intention of visiting ever again. Like these are, I'm talking like the thirties, forties, even fifties, right? Like decades in that you get taught a lot in film school. Mm -hmm. Right. And as a result, I just like never be, there's a thing that I have, right. When something is being forced to me, like I have to learn this, you have to know this. It makes me not want to, uh, uh, it makes me not want to like look at a more. Yeah. Right. 
because mm-hmm. I feel like, well, they're teaching it to me, so I just, I don't care. I don't care. And, uh, uh, you know, that's clearly a folly on my beliefs here, on my, on my, on my way of living, because I think some of these, you know, older properties. 100%. They're, they're From good. A Star is Born to Rebecca to Black Narcissus. Oh, Rebecca. Yeah, that's a great one. Oh, Black so Narcissus. Good. I mean, that's, yeah. yeah, that was like, I had to see that in film school and I love it. Uh, I'm trying to think of like other ones. Uh, well, I mean, even like when we discussed the Twilight Zone, you know, how oh, many Twilight different Zone, perfect, like. Yeah revivals have there been and none of them can compare to the original mm, 1960s absolutely one. absolutely true and i uh the first episode uh our very very first episode right which was uh lost in space i mean that yes. pilot yep. for that tv mm-hmm. show was just so it was it's good sci-fi and it, yeah. it, it was wonderful and it was shot beautifully for mm-hmm. a tv show right like i was i found yeah. myself enamored and I'm going to uh, kick it back to two earlier episodes where I kind of want to re- uh, see how you remember these. But remember when we did our Valentine's Day episode and we did Love Affair and Affair to Remember and Love Affair? I remember those, I think yes. your favorite was the 30s one. I think it was. And I think it was because the other two were awful. <laughs> uh, but no. it's, it's astounding how you know the 1930s one can be the the most tight and the most well written and the one that gets you the most it was also yeah it was a faster paced one you mm-hmm. talk faster right i guess it had the transatlantic accents going on yes, yes and uh but i think the one i had the most problem i had was the 90s one because again it just lacked soul it did yeah right and who was the famous actress that gave her last performance there Catherine hepburn Catherine hepburn right and it's just like well that's a shame yeah <laughs> <laughs> could have been better yeah could and been. i think the 50s one would have been great if they just cut out those musical numbers i don't remember the 50s one that well now the fi- the, the musical numbers yeah uh it's, it's, it's forgotten because yeah, the 30s she, one is good the 30s one is the good because it's also good. it's also just uh and it's available for free everywhere so mm-hmm. this valentine's day you want to you want to woo someone watch love affair yes that's a good one yeah actually last year we uh we did a compilation episode for valentine's day where we talked oh, about that's right. love and be- movies in yes. honor of your marriage in yeah. honor of our marriage which i can't believe it'll be a year mm-hmm. in like a month at this point yeah crazy oh boy right? so I know. much has changed the, i think the uh, world has changed the world's everything has changed it's so weird to look at like our pictures and stuff from the wedding because i'm like this is feels like ages ago i know it's yeah it's weird anyway uh for me i think that after two and a half years of doing this starting at a place where I wasn't really going to the movies and I was upset because, you know, and I still think this to me, the art form that I love is dead. Right. So why would I go out and watch it when I can just catch up with all these things in the past that I've missed? I still very much feel that way, but you know, watching, being a little bit more open to television and looking at these films in a critical way, I've realized that even in a postmodern world where, you know, we feel like everything's been done. So what do we do now? But retell things. Right. There's the beauty in retelling. That itself is kind of an art form. How do you retell this story? How do you take this property that everybody knows, or at least we hope they know, and make it your own, put a new spin on it, uh, add new elements to it. And it, that those properties have been the most exciting to see mm-hmm. instead of the straight up remakes or the reboots and whatever and especially when it's just inspired for me you messed up our title (laughs) remakes reboots or whatever yeah (laughs) there's a third i can't think of it uh but that to me is what art is you know like i don't think art is anything other than something that was inspired and came from a place of just what 100 percent creativity um you know even the biggest b movie can be art in my eyes because of the way that it was shot and i think that that's what some of these properties that we've done some of the ones that i mentioned like the dark crystal and watchmen and whatnot uh were done for a reason and because they had something to say and they wanted they really really loved these properties that especially the dark crystal there's so much love in that Mm -hmm. new Mm -hmm. piece um and that was just also really wonderful to see yeah so i think one other key takeaway i took i've taken away in the last 100 episodes and this is actually mostly from the chucky episode oh yeah yeah uh-huh and that is that sometimes uh i i this is a critique on hollywood they're mm-hmm. over reliance on trying to piggyback off of a property's popularity yes as a crutch yes. is is a detriment to the industry because child's play the new one is actually a surprisingly interesting movie 
and it could have been it would have been better if it didn't have if it didn't try to like force chucky like child's play as like the as like what they were selling me on i think it would have mm-hmm. worked great as just a, a a toy that's ai that goes crazy and it doesn't have to, it could have references to chucky like an homage but it didn't have to be a child's play and watching some of these movies more and more i i'm starting to feel that way right i think borat falls on that for me right like i don't need the borat shtick yeah. sasha baron cohen could have created a brand new character to he explore he practically these. did his daughter he, you're right yeah he basically did but he didn't need to rely on 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 borat and stuff and uh no, oh didn't. god borat is like more horrific i guess now after the insurrection right yeah like you think about those guys that he <laughs> those people that he was hanging out with at the towards the end of the movie like it's just like oh uh, he was warning I think us i recognize from one of them yeah from they, borat. they might have been there practically yeah it's yeah that's 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 that that's that's its own thing and yeah we won't go there but um eddie have you did you learn anything in the last hundred episodes did you learn like how offensive i could be <laughs> oh yeah there's that uh i learned also to be uh quick when i know you're gonna be offensive to try to be like uh, a little censorship here okay <laughs> all right <laughs> no. hold back a, hold back just a touch um I learned that Nicole has an in- interesting way of titling episodes. <laughs> too. Oh, yeah. So I actually uh, want to take this opportunity to do a little trivia. Yeah, oh. let's do it. I'm I, gonna I, ne- I'm gonna win this. Well, you you well you you did most of the titles, right? Most of them, yes, I've done. Yeah. All right. So I I'm feel go- like most of the time there's stuff I said. So when you know that, <laughs> you, when you okay, so this is for the person who didn't do the title. Okay. All right. All right. All right okay. So. No, you guys was both because I think okay. I think it's a fair. I think it's fair. I'll, I'll be quiet if I I know it. I'll see if Fernando can see it. Okay, first one. I guess they're gonna be hoes? Question mark. Oh, Babysitters Club. That wasn't me, so I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, that was. <laughs> that was Rolando. <laughs> that was that was uh, that's from that's a line that I said during the episode, right? What I was saying is just like, how did Netflix? How is this? How I assume that it was gonna be pitched Netflix. But mm-hmm. I was afraid they were going to remake, they, they were going to take Baby Sisters Club. So I was afraid it's just like, oh, I guess that's how they're going to pitch it, right? It's just like, they're just going to be hoes. Like, that's how I assumed Netflix was going to tackle Baby Sisters Club. And I was so happy they did not go that route. So happy they didn't go that route. For it was sure. such a good show. Thank you, Eddie. You make me sound so sexist. <laughs> <laughs> the next one. They bang, comma, okay? Question mark. I know that one. I know that one too. It's Mary Poppins. No, oh, wait, wait. No, no, wait. No, no, no. No, that's no. the Adams Family. Yeah, yes. it's the Adams Family. The Mary yes. Poppins yes. one has bang in it, but it's, it's a bang history. A bang history. Yeah, that's right. Because right. we were talking yeah. about her lovers, like mm-hmm. the, she has the two a bang chimney sweeps. Up, yeah. And Lynn Manuel Miranda. <laughs> this one's an easy one. I'll give you this one. Mm. Good, but it's funny. Muppets be dying. Oh, yeah. Oh. The Dark, <laughs> dark crystal. crystal. Yep. That was uh, that's a funny title. Which who said that would was it you or me? I that sounds like you. Oh my god! <laughs> Next one, hope is a dangerous thing. Oh my god! I think I, know, I, I know said that, but I think it's is that Pet Cemetery? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yes. yeah. Which, yeah. which uh, that was my favorite episode. Oh, was it? Yeah, oh, it's well, my I mean, yeah. Episode. Yeah. yeah, I can see why. That's, okay, that's cute. Fairy dusting. Oh, I know this one. The Kasha Falls Birdcage? Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Fairy dusting. So if you don't remember, fairy dusting is the act of uh, straightening your house, like literally straight, like taking away anything that might make you gay, make you uh-huh. seem gay. Uh-huh. So uh, putting everything away before like your family or visitors come over. Oh, okay. Wait, hold on. I got dusting. one for you, Eddie. Let's mm-hmm. see if you can, you can see what this one is. Uh, warped mind of a thirteen-year-old. I actually know that one. Warped mind of a thirteen-year-old. Oh my god, I forgot. I mean, I don't remember. I don't know. That uh, is, are you afraid of the dark? Uh, ah, yeah. okay. Yep. Because mm-hmm. I think it was I who was like, I want to see more. I I wished that the whole remake, right, or the reboot of Are You Afraid of the Dark was from the warped mind of that 13-year-old, but it ended up being the truth, and that was kind of the bummer of it. Spoiler. <laughs> Sorry. One more. One more, one more. Where there's a penis, 
There's a problem. <laughs> Shit. I actually. Oh, wait. I think I remember now. Uh, do you know, Nicole? I do know because it's. Yes, okay. she does. She probably did this. Did this is, is, one, yeah. She did this one. <laughs> you, yeah. Um, that was shit. Uh, was it Oceans 13? Yes, it was the yeah. Oceans. Yeah. yeah. I said that line. Yes, you I remember did. this. Where there's a penis, there's a problem. That was the lesson yes. that I learned in. Oh, wait. That's just a lesson from all of them. I, I just can't help but say this one Boxy Boobies. Yeah, Tomb oh, Raider. <laughs> Tomb Raider. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My gosh, so many properties we've done. So oh, much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who, who, who would have thought? Yeah, seriously. Who would have thought? Uh, well, geez. I mean, so much. We've done so much to talk about. But, you know, I think, I guess I just want to look forward to the future. Uh, mm-hmm. Hopefully we could do 100 more episodes. I no, I episodes mean, so uh, the back. society, basically the media, Hollywood has given us a lot more. That's true. There's no stopping. To talk stopping. about. Yeah. yeah, seriously. We there have is. so many things in competition for what we're going to do next week for our Oh, all the time. First. Like, I just want to point out, Walker come premiere soon. What? Walker, Texas Ranger. When? Uh, I, it's on the CW. It'll premiere, I think, I think it comes out next week or this week. Oh, I sh- think I say let's uh, let's let it live a little bit. Maybe okay. DVR some of these episodes and then like watch it because I actually kind of do want to revisit the original Walker Texas Ranger. I'm excited about watching anything Chuck Norris. So it's I'm with so it. bad, but we need to. Ha- <laughs> hopefully, we can find a guest star on that one. That'd be great. Yeah, maybe uh, speaking we can get about Chuck guest Norris. stars, who has been our, our guest stars? These uh, oh, we've had a few guest stars. We've had a few who great th- guest enjoyed? stars actually. Ooh, yeah, one I'm of my favorite actually was for our Unsolved Mysteries episode. Yes. Oh, we got yeah, someone really, who really I've been listening to a podcast of hers since like 2016 and stuff. You know, we said earlier that I knew True Crime. She was one of them. And we got yeah. her and she was a blast. Chari Worrell from uh, Crime Lines was on our Unsolved Mysteries. Yes. And uh, definitely, actually, that might be in my top five favorite episodes ever. That's a That was a good episode. I, me and her really got into that nice conversation about the role that media plays when it comes to like mystery solving. So I did enjoy that episode. One of my two favorite episodes are the Batman and Joker episodes where yes. we had the, the brothers from the brotherhood of Batman. One of uh, the best I think we've done. They, yeah, they were they are episode. great. Yep. Those were two, yep. A two parter. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I think they brought it. It's interesting talking to, cause I, I am a, I'm a big Batman fanboy, but they take it to another level, right? They mm-hmm. really love and have a worship for this com- the comics. That I'm more of a passive fan in that sense. I would be way more fair weather than they are. And, uh, uh, you know, introducing you also, like getting your take on the Batman mythos also was interesting for both, especially the Joker, right? Because I think the Joker yes, has yeah. way, you have way more to talk about when you're talking about Joker. Yes, 100%. Oh, mm-hmm. and I also want to say one last one. Um, we did a episode for Christmas where we talked about Christmas covers and our guest on that was Nicole Lippi. And that's actually been one of my favorite moments in this podcast history because Nicole kind of owned Rolando in this moment, if you remember. I don't. What moment? <laughs> where Rolando hates Christmas music and he was sharing that. And Nicole said something to the effect of, I feel like if you hate Christmas music, then you just assume that everyone's happy and has someone something to celebrate every Christmas. Is that- <laughs> and I remember your face when she said that. <laughs> and like she was not attacking you by any means but she made a very good point and i think that was it was just uh i, th- I thought that was very well said of her actually i yeah. thought that was a really great point and uh i do love that episode and that's actually one of our highest listened episodes of all it time it is mm. yes it mm-hmm. is uh but i'll give a shout out to some of the other guests that we've had we had yes, lincoln please. from far corner studios we yes lincoln, lincoln he was for twice and we had a twice, yes. watchman and for the star trek picard picard episode correct yes, uh, yes, yes. i also want to actually yeah greg stevens of uh pop arena mm-hmm. he helped us out with the are you afraid of the dark episode that's also one of our more higher listened to episodes also uh, yes absolutely it, it shows is. you what a youtube fan base can do uh, we also had Mike Josick on from a podcast named Scooby Doo to discuss our Scooby Doo episode, which that was actually a lot of fun. And I didn't think I was going to like Scooby Doo as much as I did. Right. I remember that one. He was also really, really informative. Yes, he was. Like he really knew his Scooby Doo shit. Yes. And Scooby we also, poops. one of our Scooby, yes, one of our first guests we did with the music episode was Ryan Liancis from Schwiz. 
Oh my God! Yes, Ryan. How could I forget? He mm-hmm. was uh, he was the band from my wedding. He was also one of my uh, groomsmen, but he was the music for our wedding. Yes, and, and my uh, sister guest started on an episode, and I want to give her a shout out. That's there. right. That was the episode. I think me and Eddie were supposed to be on our honeymoon, right? Yes, that was yes. that was supposed, to, but then Corona happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, wait. So. No, you guys were just. You were away doing something because that was we might have, but that was way before uh, COVID. I think it but. was wasn't it? Pl- this was uh this is what the uh, Harry Potter one. Yeah, it was October of 2019. If you recall what you were. Oh, doing okay, then. no, the night. Oh, maybe we were just. Oh no, that was my bachelor party. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, that's yep, what it was. That, yes, yes, yes. It was, it was wedding yep. related, but the mm-hmm. fun part of the wedding. Yep. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so thank you to all the guests. We hope to have on way more guests. Yeah, that's uh, something I want for sure in the future. Like definitely. more guests and stuff. I want like TikTokers. <laughs> I want like YouTubers. I want like chefs, right? What can we co- talk sure. about with the chef? I don't know. Alton Brown. Anything. Yeah, please. Good that eats. would be great. Uh, Guy yeah. Fieri. Come on. <gasps> no, Guy Fieri hasn't remade his show because it's so, it's so long living. But he's the other famous, you know, alliteration, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, Triple D. Yes, it's true. Oh, my God. We can get him on the show. We can talk about, like, how did we come up with get our Get Triple titles. D on Triple R, yeah. yeah. If we could get the host from um, Nailed It. Nikki Byer. I wish we could cute. get Nikki Byer. She'd be like, Eddie, Rolando, I just love this podcast. <laughs> Uh, that was a good Nikki Byer. That was actually pretty good, yeah. I practice. They, I, it shows. It's just because Nail It now is like, Nail It Mexico, they, Nail It France. Fun off so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just like, oh, it's at a, <laughs> Seriously. The show that could. And now there's the one that it has just, it's like the, so, a similar format. I guess that's the way, because it's probably the same studio that they use, but now it's the leftovers. Yeah, it's like, like the turn leftover leftovers games. into yes, like a, uh, like a gourmet cuisine. Cooking shows are huge now. It's crazy. They're so cheap to make. Yeah. It's so, so cheap, you know? So, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so just looking forward to the next 100. And and I think 2021 is going to be a good year. You know, last year was kind of tough. We didn't have some episodes out. But I'm, I'm looking forward to consistency and for us to be on top of these new materials. And, yeah, just to be back at it like we were before yeah. all this shit went down. I, I'm 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 looking forward to like trying out. I know we were just talking about like random like genres and stuff, but it'd be great to like kind of explore other things that have been remade that maybe don't like most people don't think about per se. Like I remember like with Ryan, we did covers. Mm-hmm. We did that random episode uh, t- game shows and stuff. Yes, I think, yes, and that was I a think lot of fun. There are, yeah, I think there are opportunities that will present itself that we can For explore. Sure for other things that could be that might consider re remakes. I know that Friends is going to have a reunion. That's an R that maybe we can cover. You just want to do Friends. I would want to do Friends. Yeah, we, can been, have yeah, you, we can have yeah, your sister done. as a guest Ooh, because she sure. is also a Friends lover. So. Sex in the City is also going to be made soon. Sex Why? in the City. Who yeah. fucking knows? It's a it's not a re, it's a revival. Yeah, without oh my Samantha. God. Without Samantha, who's the it's best It's almost character? like petty because everybody you, knows about that drama. Right, but would you rather they recast Samantha or do you think they're going to kill her off? I'd rather they not do it. <laughs> well, I'd rather... I honestly would rather like Jennifer Tilly play Samantha. Like, you just bring in Jennifer Tilly. <laughs> that would know. be the ultimate burn. Oh, my God. That's actually kind of brilliant. That's like, fuck you, Kim Cattrall. We don't need you. We have Jennifer Tilly. Who's, uh, who's Stifler's mom? Ooh, Jennifer yeah, Coolidge. She Jennifer could, Coolidge. She yes. could play, she could also play she Samantha. Could, I could, Ooh, what's I really she want on? A hot dog real bad. Wait, but wait a minute. What's she on? Was she? Was she? I think she was a city? supporting character at one point. Uh, or I guess she I must have been that. a guest star. She's yeah, at some point. For that show. I'm I going know. to. I actually. I got to double really, check. Yeah, I've only seen a little bit of Sex in the City, so I'm actually really looking forward to this one. That would be good to have a guest on. That would be good. Yeah, a Sex in the City podcast. Sure. God, so much to look forward to. There's so much happening and. And we're just going to gossip keep girl. How do you feel about gossip girl? I am so not looking forward to that. I cannot wait because especially Bridgerton got my, my lips wet basically because, ah, yes, because Bridgerton is basically gossip what? girl with Jane <laughs> wait a Austen. Minute. But these are all TV shows. Any movies? A movie. The movie theater is dead, Nicole, but they're all coming to HBO, right? Like Dune. Dune is coming to HBO max. Yes. Dune is coming to HBO max. For example, I think that'll be towards the end of the year. Uh, there's a, I'm sure there's a few things and stuff. I mean, the truth is like this 2021 oh, yeah, might present, are. 
What? Oh, there yeah, no, more I, stuff. I see. I see a list. So I'll I'm tell gonna you say, about like, it when we, we maybe 2021 presents itself as like the year that maybe we would cover. Like you guys could submit ideas. Like if it's an old property, if you guys really want us to check it out, we'll try yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. Actually. The point is, we'll be watching a lot of TV. It looks like, but thank God yeah, we're yeah. all home because of quarantine. So yeah, thank God for sure. <laughs> Silver linings, people, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's look at our positives. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we will see you guys next week for our 101st episode. I think we will be discussing the Animaniacs. Spoiler alert. Wow. I, oh, and also we might, another yeah. spoiler alert. We're going to remake the show, guys. So Stan, <laughs> get ready for that. That's what we have in store for the 101st episode. It's not even going to be me and Nicole anymore, right? It's going to be like two, it's gonna be like, two other people, two other people who, who are going to pretend they're doing us. their best versions of us. Yeah. Yes. That'd be great, actually. <laughs> I would love to have an episode like that where we're just like on the back end, like how to, you know, like telling them what to do. <laughs> <That'd> be <cool. laughs> uh, so, it'd be like an yeah. art project. That would that would actually be really cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But guys, thank you so much for giving us 100 episodes. We could not be here without our listeners. Mm-hmm. Don't forget, we're giving away those two mugs. So be sure to peep out our Instagram with inst- you know, have instructions. Yes. And uh, be sure you know, to call. Be sure to call. I'm going to give you guys that number one more time. Call us. Our number is 862-248-2326. Leave us a voicemail. Leave us your thoughts. Leave us your comments. Anything. No, nothing's off limits here. And uh, if you're part of the uh, giveaway, just make sure you give us your name and email address. Yes. Uh, if you are a fan of this podcast, you've enjoyed it for 100 episodes and you want a couple more at least, please find us on Apple Podcasts. Uh, Apple Podcast. Follow us and please rate us a nice five-star review. It really helps us grow and stick around. You mm-hmm. can also find us on Instagram. We're very active there at Remakes, Reboots, and Revivals. Uh, you can reach out to us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Remakes Reboots Revivals. Shoot us an email, Remakes Reboots Revivals at gmail.com. And lastly, we are also on Twitter at Remakes Podcast. Yep. And you can also listen to all our episodes at www.remakesrebootsrevivals.com. So you heard us talking about a lot of old episodes. <laughs> There's your chance to listen to some of those older ones. Yeah, they're worth it. Trust me. Check them out. Yeah. And uh, I guess that's it. I guess that's it. Wow. 100 episodes. Of what does the next 100 hold? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we'll be snippeting this in t- uh, another 100 episodes from mm, now. So. Hopefully. Hopefully. But until then. Stay, stay unoriginal. original.